Did you know that the S&P 500 has spent over 80% of its entire life back to the 1800s in either the bullish or neutral market regimes? So what if we could leverage that regime, bullish regime, to find stocks that not only follow the index, but outperform it? And that's what we're going to do here with Swing Trading and Momentum System. I'm the founder of Pollinate Trading, and if you love trading edges, actual edges, on the market with data and real strategies, make sure to like and subscribe this video, please. Yeah. Today, we're diving into how market regimes, especially the bull quiet market regime, which we've been talking about all week, to create, they help create the perfect condition for momentum trading, for trend trading systems, perpetually rising uh, trades. And the best way to take advantage of that is, well, we're just going to talk about my swing B system here today because it's it's the system I trade. If there was a better system for me, I would trade it. This is the one I trade for my own personal account. It's a strategy that um, has been out. We've used it for coming up on four years now. Uh, it's designed to find the strongest stocks in each sector and trade those. So first of all, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, this is a little tool I built in Python to go and find the different types of markets. Basically, if you're in a choppy market, a downtrend or an uptrend, so three different up, down, sideways, um, and in each of those, what type of volatility is this? High volatility or low volatility? Okay, so right away you can see that the biggest one here is the uptrend low. That's in essence, the bull quiet market regime. Also, you'll notice that the one choppy low, choppy high volatility into the uptrend low. So all these combined, it was about 25% of the time in choppy low, 10% in choppy high, 50 something percent in uh, uptrend low volatility. Those combined account for at least 80% of the market. I'm talking going back to the 1800s when the S&P was built. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Um, so it's looking like a one month here chart. That's the, uh, so this would have been the very beginning, 1871. And you can see that, yeah, there, you know, there were periods using my, uh, the SQN, SQN tool. Uh, you can see that there were periods in, in like the 1890s where a, a decent bear market lived for three years back in the World War I, post-World War I era, um, into the roaring 20s. And then since then, it spent very little time in, in bear markets, pretty much coming out of the Great Depression and into World War II, when the US became the global reserve currency, that pretty much put the S&P 500 in an uptrend that kind of never ended. So you can almost even eliminate a lot of that neutral and, and bearish time uh, within the first 70 years of the index. So it moves up. And so what we want to do is we just want to find stocks that are going to ride that trend. Now, the thing about the, well, let, let's get into one more little piece of edge. Okay. When I'm building systems, I want to have edges. I want to have something that's basically going to say, okay, no matter what, you're playing the right game. If, if you wanted to cross a river that was moving fairly fast, you would want to start fairly high up to the point that you wanted to eventually cross at because you're going to get in and the river is just going to carry you. And so you're not doing much work. You're just kind of like moving across to get to the other cross through the current. And lo and behold, you end up at your destination as opposed to starting down current and trying to move up current to your location. There's risk of dying. Fun. And I don't know. Uh, it, it's just a lot harder right, to, to go with the current. And that's what we're doing here. So what I'm looking at here, and uh, I, I brought this up the other day, I'm gonna show it again. In essence, what this shows is if you bought the S&P 500 at the close of business and then sold it at the open of business the next day, 
that would have been 228% returns. I'm not saying that this is a strategy you want to run out and start trading. Our overnight anomaly is based off of this. It's not exactly this, but it uses this edge to start. It uses this other edge that, you know, we're in that upper regime and that stocks go up. It's stacking those three edges together and then saying, okay, we want to be in the overnight session. We don't want to be focusing all our, like yesterday, we talked about day trading and mean reversion stuff. If you bought the open and sold the close of the S&P 500, that's what happens. It's a sideways game. And that's why you, when, when we're talking about day trading, it's very beneficial to be day, finding it a day trading market and then trading mean reversion strategies for that market. This one, if we're talking about swing trading, then outside of a couple of small instances here and here and here and here uh, in the last 25 years or so, being long is where the money is made. Being out is where the money is kept. Your strategy could be, I'm not trading. That's one strategy. If you know, you're a hero, then you're obviously not trying to long the market when it's in these crazy times, you're shorting it, right? So trying to short the market every single day for, you know, for the next 20 years to, to eventually catch one of these moves is, is a really horrible and painful strategy. It could work out, especially if you have position sizing and all sorts of things on your side. But for the most part, it's going to hurt. The argument for swing trading is that it's already stacking on top of the upward trend of the market and you're catching that overnight move, right? Somebody is, you know, my father-in-law is reading his newspaper or watching his news or doing, you know, whatever. And he gets an idea and he's like, oh, I'm going to buy Apple tonight or I'm going to buy Apple tomorrow. But he, you know, doesn't, he's not going to wake up in time or, you know, he's, he's like, I'll just put the order in now. So he goes ahead, puts the order in and most likely he got the idea because he saw it on TV. There's news or something like that. And so a bunch of people put their order in and buy and you get a gap. Right now, the gap can close, but usually what happens in these bullish, uh, bull quiet regime is it gaps and then returns back. So let's say it opens up like 1.2%, goes back down a little bit and or however much, but it usually closes up near its gap on the end of the day in this regime. This is the so August 5th of 2024, we had a pretty big down day. It was a like it. it it wasn't a crash crash. It was four or 5% down day, depending on what you were looking at. It was a, in fact, let's, let's just take a look at it. So I can um, put the, so I can put a little bit of perspective on here. Okay. So this would have been right here is the gap. This is the, okay. So August 5th was right here. That was a Monday. Friday, it went from 56, let's call it 70 to 51.22. So that's a 10% down move in two weeks. So that was a strong down move on the S&P 500. So we're going to go take a look at everything that has happened since this gap down and compare it next to each other. So this is the morning of August 5th, the gap down so this horizontal line I draw should show where I'm just going to move it right there. So now right here, the beginning of this chart, everything to the right of it is what has happened up till today. Today is October 4th. So a, a whole two months has happened since that day. The very bold white line here. I'm going to see if I can make it the that one is the S&P 500. Okay. Since August 5th, the S&P 500 has gained 9.43%. On the other side, Coinbase is down 5%. So let's look at Coinbase. Yeah, it's lower than it from it, the price it was that day. So that would have been, you know, your worst move. The best performers is NVIDIA at 31.13%. So let's take a look at NVIDIA. And so it goes from uh, 91 to 123. It made it up to 130. Right. So the strongest of all of these is NVIDIA. 
Emerging markets up 17%. Uh, tech, Amazon, GameStop, gold, uh, Apple, Berkshire, e even agricultural um, commodities, utilities are all outperforming the S&P 500. So what that's telling me is that if I want to own, first of all, if I want to own the S&P 500, I need to either have some leverage or accept the fact that I'm only getting a 9% return. Now, you may look at this and say, great, Chris, how would you have known to buy NVIDIA? Everybody, those have been incredible movers this year. And, but Google only up 5%, Microsoft only up 6%. Like you would think that those, given where we are with AI and all this other stuff, that those would have outperformed Amazon <laughs> uh, or gold or even agricultural uh, commodities, but they didn't. And so the thing about it is when we're looking to trade swing trading strategies, if we can't do better than just buying the S&P 500 and going with it, then we shouldn't do anything, right? We should just buy the S&P and be done with it. Just buy it. And you would have made yourself a, a nice nine and a half percent. Or you could triple that and you can triple your returns by just being in the strongest of uh, those stocks. And so that's what we're talking about here. That's what the Swing Beast strategy is all about. The Swing Beast strategy is built to get into the strongest stocks, momentum-driven stocks, the ones that are actually going to be in play, not the ones that I hope are going to be in play. You know, a strategy that a lot of folks go after is, oh, well, Coinbase is down, so I'm buying Coinbase, right? And it's, you know, it's, it's got to move or, you know, Bitcoin, whatever, you know, it, it, ironically, if we look at crypto during that period of time, uh, it's up quite a bit. It's currently at 60,000. So still 20 something, about 20% gain, double the S&P, but Coinbase, which is a crypto exchange, cannot pull it together relative to the actual underlying products that they trade. So without having a, a quantitative systematic approach to these, you can get caught up in this game of, oh, I got to own crypto. It's the best. It's changing the world. Well, Tesla was a good move. Uh, their AI is coming out and, you know, they're, they are going to, you know, they, they offer TPUs and Apple just changed trading all their AI, Apple intelligence on TPUs. So using TensorFlow, so tensors are going to be a big thing. And the only one who really does that is Google. And that would have been your bet, right? Except it's, you know, only up 5% in the time. Whereas Tesla, Nvidia, Amazon relative to, when you, th when you think about like bleeding edge tech, I don't put Amazon above Google or Microsoft so much. Um, I certainly don't put Berkshire above Microsoft. I don't put agricultural commodities above Google or Microsoft, but that's how it turned out. What we're looking at here is momentum driven uh, trades. Okay. So without having a strategy like swing B strategy, traders often make the mistake of trying to catch falling knives, like we were talking about with Coinbase, right? Like that actual day, August 5th, is not the day that I would have actually bought those stocks. So, no, I'm not actually, that's not true. I would be in something probably, in fact, S&P looks pretty good, you know, a little bit better right here, um, where it, because now S&P has shown the momentum. Let's see, compared to Tesla, it's shown momentum. Compared to Meta, sh definitely showing momentum. So what I'm looking for is, I'm looking for the stocks that are gonna be stronger. So one way to do this, let's just create our own little Spy, Tesla, Microsoft. What are some other excellent uh, momentum? I'm trying to think of some other really strong uh, Lockheed Martin right now. With the Bitcoin on there. Uh, let's throw GameStop on there. Yeah, GameStop had its. Uh, uh, let's put the symbols over here. 
symbol name. Okay. So if we're looking at, let's say, let's say the breakout here, August 24th, let's just see who since August 24th, let me put my vertical line here. So it's easier to reference 17, 18 September. Since the 18th of September, when the S and P 500 broke out, which is right here, let's see what the gains were since then. S&P 500, 1.47%, Bitcoin 2.3%, Tesla 8%, Lockheed Martin 8.5%, uh, up 10%, 9.9%, Microsoft still down, GameStop down 6%. So let's just add Google in here because that was one we were... Google's the uh, same as Microsoft. So what we would have found is that the sector, the strongest sector is, well, Tesla, whatever they are, uh, Lockheed Martin, khaki. So defense would have been the way to go. And let me just try to add a defense. See if I can find an ETF. ETF. Let's see how it compares to ITA. There's guns. Gun spinnaker ETF series total capital self defense. Mm, no, that's not the one. Okay. So defense as a sector is up 4%, but Lockheed Martin and khaki are up like almost double that. Okay, so that's the that's the key point, another key point that we're looking at here. But the actual strongest names in the sector is the one you wanna be in, if that makes sense. So like if tech's up, that doesn't mean I just go and buy a tech company and I'm gonna do great. I could go buy XLK, let's add the XLK here. See what I mean? So the XLK is up it's negative 1% actually in that period of time. Um, but we know that Meta is up 10%. We know that Amazon is up uh, 2%. Well, Apple, Apple's flat. So, but it's, you know, XLK is down 1%. So it's still outperformed. So then it, again, it goes to what do I want to own? Do I want to own just the sector or do I want to own the individual stock that's going to give me the bigger? returns. So we go and we find the sectors, we find the big names in it, and that's what we go to. And then you ride that out. And the way it works, it works like this in crypto, it works like this in stocks, it works like this everywhere. You have, um, you have the big names going. After a period of time, the big safe names like um, Apple, like Amazon, like Google, like Microsoft, like uh, like Bitcoin. Everybody is in it and they get it and they're like, oh, this is great. I've, you know, we've doubled our money. We're doing great. And then you get bored or more accurately, like professional money managers and people in that industry get to a point where they have to beat. If they just own the mag seven, the, the best tech stocks uh, or the biggest stocks of the uh, the stock market, the top seven, they're not going to be uh, probably employed. <laughs> like if you're an investor, if, you, if you've given your money to a fund manager who earned you 33% this year while the market was up 33%. So this is when people start, like NVIDIA is a great example. When NVIDIA took off, what did most people do after NVIDIA did its massive run? there back in uh, uh, their their big earnings break back in May of 2023. They were trading at $30, I'm sorry, so $120. It was trading at 30, gapped up to 40 or so, 37. So times, I think four. Um, so it went from 120 to like 160 overnight. And then a year later, it's uh, three to four, 300% higher. So what did everybody do? Is they're like, oh, the move's already done in NVIDIA. I'm going to go buy AMD. I'm going to go buy Micron. I'm going to go buy SMCI. I'm going to buy Intel. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm going to buy these um, other chip makers in order to compete. And they actually miss the boat. So what we're looking at here is this is actually a power law. Okay. The winner doesn't just, it, it, it isn't like, like a sector wins 
but there's one winner in that sector that really wins okay there's nvidia for chips it used to be other chip makers who were the leaders um now chips are leading the sector's strong so all the money goes in the sector but then the real money is in where the highest amount of profits are the best scalability the best story the best long-term outlook that's where the long-term money ends up being in it and it goes in and it stays in and it continues to stay in where um if you're trying to be cute because you think you missed the move you end up eventually you know buying something else it underperforming you sell it and then you you end up moving it into the leader or the leader buys the lower performers or the lower performers go out of business or they lose business so it it's a power law where it, it all starts flowing to the leaders and that's also what we're talking about here we want to be in the leaders when they're leading and that gives you an opportunity to to have real growth so if you're buying something you know if you're buying it at ninety dollars and it goes to 140 because it's the leader and it had a split if you try to do that with a, other tech stocks maybe thinking that oh they already did it we're going to try to piggyback it they're going to underperform and it's you know like i say we, we look over here you could just buy the sector and you, you can make you know you can buy the s p you can make 10 percent, or you could buy the tech part of the sector and make 16 percent, or you could buy the best of the sector which is nvidia and apparently meta and you can make 30 percent so when we're trend trading when we're in the momentum style trading when we're looking at the the type of uh market regimes once we've identified the market regime once we've identified that the the moves happen over multiple days not during the day a single day move during the day is lovely it's great it's fun it's cool to catch but the reality is the move happens over time in the overnight sessions and so being in those is is super um super important again that's what swing beast is all about swing beast gets you in and keeps you in until it's time to you know get out what you want to be doing is you want to be getting in over here when it's breaking like this is this is textbook swing beast type of scenario you have a breakout here breaks out at let's call it 50 or so and it goes and this you know it lasts like this one lasted from when did we when did we see it december to to march so three to four months of just breakout 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 before it finally calms and when does it calm down it starts down here in the bull quiet that's when the move really kicks off is bull quiet but once that gets going it doesn't stop that's another characteristic of the momentum trades once you're in the leaders that's why we picked the leaders once you're in them they go they go further and they last longer than most people expect and here's a here's a good representation of why because what happens is you have these when something finally does break out when it finally does break out everybody who thought this was the breakout got typed out finally they're like Bleh, i'm done what was the giveaway here we're in bull volatile and it's breaking out that's that's market toppy behavior okay we're in we're in the bull quiet here that that had a potential but it didn't fully work but you you didn't have to like it stopped out in that one and then again back into the bull quiet again it takes it does the breakout but the breakouts are are a lot more rare in in these bull quiet scenarios so what you want to be doing is catching an entry and then exiting as it moves into the bull volatile but that's the third thing you know the first thing is the regimes that we want to be in where there's going to be the most opportunity is the the bull quiet so swing trading longer time because that's where the moves actually happen that's our first and our second edge our third edge is going back and finding those regimes and seeing how to find a way to get in that is predictable that is repeatable that is transferable nope you could be a declining bull quiet you could be neutral bull quiet 
could be a number of different things. It's just that it, the conditions are going to be right for other, the final little bit. We know we're gonna cross the stream. So we go and find a stream to get, we have to get to the other side. Let's go find the best spot to cross the shortest area. Okay, next we're gonna, like we're gonna start up here and we're gonna end over here because we're gonna go with the current, boom. I wanna make sure that where I enter, there's the easiest place to get in. So it's safest. I'm not actually going into rapids or, you know, like uh, piranha filled water or something like that. And then my trajectory should get me to a landing place that I can get out safely. I'm not trying to get out in mangroves. I'm not trying to get out in like moss covered rock where it would be slippery. And, you know, again, rapids could be there. Like you're, you're stacking all these good and the time of year, you know, the season, you, <laughs> you wouldn't want to be doing that in winter so much as you would rather do it in, in like, you know, the summer or fall. Springtime is runoff from the mountains and could be very dangerous. So you want to like stack all these good conditions to be successful. That's what we're talking about here. We're stacking the regime edge, the overnight multi-day hold, the strongest of the sectors. That's what it's all about. It's predictable market behavior. It happens over and over and over, you know, like I showed you a chart from, well, since the end of World War II, it's just gone straight up. It works because we teach, the Swing B system teaches you system, uh, a systematic approach that's predictable. Predictable that you know that there's a potential trade coming up. It doesn't just surprise you that there's going to be one. It's repeatable. And so you can do it over and over and over and get statistical significance, not just these one-off uh, big, crazy opportunities like trying to short this thing and trying to hope that that every day for the rest of your life that tomorrow is going to be that day <laughs> it's actually the opposite there's all sorts of these other days that that doesn't happen so it's repeatable it's something that you can transfer to somebody i can transfer it to somebody they can get it and they can rebuild it and verify the results for themselves and then identify where it doesn't work and where it does work because by the way it doesn't work everywhere you have to be in an environment, you have to be in assets that are built for it more so than being in things that are, uh, you know, like you're, you're trying to, trying to square a hole. It is something that works excellently in crypto. It works excellently in stocks. It's, it works great in, in trending markets that rise. That's really what it's, uh, what it's all about. I'm going to ask if you're interested and you want real quantifiable edges on a system and i'm not talking that it doesn't take code like this is not built for the what you get is not the the full-on coded and and you know optimized uh instance on a on a a linux server uh in a data center you know it's none of that this is something that you can just get put your stuff on a chart go through the process it's about the process more than anything you go through the process and at the end of it, you have your trades or there's no trades. And then you do it the next day and the next day and the next day. It's a predictable, repeatable process. So pollinatetraining.com slash swing beast is where you can get that. And uh, you just go to pollinatetraining.com. Go ahead and sign up for our email. Uh, here's a little bit more about the strategy. If you're not a member already, or if you're not already subscribed, go to uh, pollinatetraining.com and, and get free uh, newsletter. I do like really deep dive written uh, content every few days. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. If you hate it, send it to an enemy. Uh, if you liked it, send it to your grandma. I love everybody. See.